Good morning, everyone. Paco Ojeda here, covered with cat hair, as always. <laughs> Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily broadcast live from Facebook at 1030 in the morning. Today is Thursday, August 20th. And as always, we have a great collection of headlines and stories to share with anybody that calls themselves an English-speaking Puerto Vallarta local. If you're not an English-speaking Puerto Vallarta local, you're, of course, welcome here. But primarily, for better or worse, what do we do here? We get together with other locals to talk about our lives living here in Puerto Vallarta, how to make them better, how to make them more inspiring, how to get to discover more about what our destination has to of offer. offer. And, um, and to hear me mess up my English pronunciation occasionally, but what can I say? It's not my native language. But we try as we go. <clears throat> it is always a pleasure to welcome people, friends that join us almost every day or every day. But if you happen to be new to these broadcasts, please write the word new in your comments so that we can give you a proper welcome. Also, if you have a specific question, it helps us a lot if you add the letter Q at the beginning of your comment so that we can identify it as such. We try to get to all the questions during the broadcast. And if not, I always take a good look at all the comments immediately thereafter. At that time, you can also find uh, show notes for everything that we talk about in our Facebook page, in the YouTube uh, video page, <clears throat> excuse me, and on our website. So choose to follow us wherever you want. Following us on Facebook is always best because if you are able to catch the shows live, you can interact with one another. You can ask questions and share knowledge and build friendships and build a wonderful community. And that's the part that I enjoy the most. Lots of you here, as always, it is a pleasure to see friends near and far from Anaheim, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, uh, Maryland, uh, Colorado Springs, San Miguel de Allende. I wish I was in San Miguel de Allende, Christine. It's such a beautiful city. Kathleen, with whom I had a most lovely dinner last night, Kathleen and Todd and my friend Paul, we went out for dinner at Siam Restaurant. And we'll have some great news from Siam later on in the program. Oh, screw it. Let me start with that because I am just so very happy. Siam Restaurant, which is Puerto Vallarta's most amazing Thai food restaurant, is opening a second branch. Yes. Uh, cue the applause. <laughs> yes. We, we had dinner last night there. And Michael Buford, the owner, uh, gave us the news that he had acquired a space, a restaurant space near Fluvial, uh, actually in the immediacy of Bonito Kitchen, which is in Aralias. I get the names of my colonias um, mixed up, but it is within walking distance to Costco and La Comer. And he acquired this location since last year, but for one reason or another, he was not able to get it started. And then when he was almost getting ready to get it started, came the pandemic. But now we found out from Michael that in less than two weeks time, we will be able to enjoy the Siam cuisine in our neighborhood. And I say my neighborhood or our neighborhood because we live on this side of, the, of, of Puerto Vallarta. So I'm just really excited that we're going to have a second location dangerously close to my apartment, like I could walk there and get some pot thai. So ah, I can't wait. There you go. I shared my restaurant good news um, out of order, and I don't care because I can. Uh, Raymond is in Puerto Vallarta. Um, Thomas, it was so nice to sit down and cocktail with you for the first time ever yesterday. Um, I always enjoy the opportunity to get to know um, uh, 
members of the community in person. Uh, uh, New Brunswick, Canada is in the house. Good morning, Kenneth. Uh, good morning, Susan from Palmer, Alaska. You guys are all over the place, but I know that come the winter months, you all get ready to come back, and hopefully when it's time for you to come back, uh, you will be able to travel safely, and you will establish your new uh, routine here in Puerto Vallarta as you haven't done, as you've done in the past. So let's see. Oh, Vancouver. Good morning, Ann Carton. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody that is here joining us. Today we have a little bit of mix and match um, news, uh, some good news, some crazy news, some corruption news, some uh, uh, white lie news. And we have a new lord, not a lady this time. We have a new lord, and um, and we need to figure out what's going on with all those bears in Monterrey. There are there are there's more bear related activities that we need to report. How curious is it? Now imagine what happens when you're sitting at your office and you're working, and all of a sudden a bear comes into your office. Well, we will talk about that when we get to the leisurely stuff. In the meantime, let us get started with the serious news. Well, we start with a little white lie and a complicated one. Apparently, our mayor, uh, the Puerto Vallarta mayor, Mayor Davalos, back in March said that Puerto Vallarta had 466 hospital beds ready to go for the pandemic. And it has come to light that in reality, Puerto Vallarta has less than 100 hospital beds. This was um, became public this past Monday when we learned that hospital occupation in Puerto Vallarta was at 80 percent with only 77 people in the hospital. So uh, a couple of curious people started putting A and B together and figured out, well, if there's only 77 um, people in the hospital, whatever happened to those 466 hospital beds? So this generated a lot of frustration and anger in some of the population. Obviously, we are yet to receive um, information from, uh, from the city. My volume is low. Let me get my microphone a little closer. And let me, my volume is all the way up. I certainly hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, anyhow, we've yet to hear commentary from, uh, from Davalos about, about this situation, but you know, there's a huge difference between 466 hospital beds and 100. Jesus. We see another news item about um, all the bars and night uh, clubs and nightlife businesses reopening um, in September. But again, this comes <clears throat> from the Council of Bars, Discos, and uh, Nighttime Businesses. Um, we are yet to receive uh, specific information coming from the government, but we can only uh, hope that this is going to be the case. I see a couple of comments that you cannot hear me. Let me... Is the audio better? Oh, whoa. That's probably going to be a little bit distorted. I hope the audio is better now. Um, anyhow... Um, Curious news, good news for some, not so good news for others. Airbnb has now forbidden parties in the properties. Uh, you heard that right. This goes for anybody that is trying to organize a private party in an Airbnb property. You cannot do that anymore. Oops. Uh, Airbnb also announced that it will limit the capacity in their properties to a maximum of 16 people. So if you're interested in renting an Airbnb property to throw a private party, well, bummer, you won't be able to do that anymore. I thought you should know. Lopez Obrador, our president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, has given Hugo Lopez Gatel a new job. As we know, Hugo Lopez Gatel is and has been the Undersecretary of Health. And um, he is now, as, as part of his workload, is now going to take care of, oh, here he is, wearing a face mask uh, for the first time ever <clears throat> in a press conference. Um, 
this was an interesting sighting given the fact that Hugo Lopez Gatel has never worn one before and now he chose to to wear one. Anyhow, uh, Mexico has uh, the COFEPRIS. COFEPRIS is the Federal Commission for the Protection Against Sanitary Risks. And this is going to be um, one of four agencies that will also be under the control of Subsecretary Hugo lopez Gatel. Uh, we can only hope that this is something that will not only advance his own professional career, but will also bring... Um, better services to the dependencies that he's going to be supervising. Uh, switching gears, I want to let you know about this huge corruption scandal that is going on in Mexico. We had touched, oh, okay, I think you can hear me well. There you go. We had talked about Emilio Lozoya, former director of Pemex, uh, the Mexican agency that handles our gas, uh, gasoline, and so forth and so on. Um, he is has been brought back to Mexico to answer for uh, charges of corruption in past presidential elections involving a foreign company called Odebrecht. It's a construction company that is located in Brazil. Uh, Emilio Lozoya has been brought back to Mexico and is now in the process of spilling his um, his his accusations or implications, and now. He has implied three former Mexican presidents, Carlos Salinas de Gortari, Felipe Calderón, Enrique, Enrique Peña Nieto, and 13 other high-ranking politicians related or involved in um, bribery and influence trafficking between the years of 2010 and 2016. How this is going to unfold um, in Mexico is is for us to really find out. There are, needless to say, there are those people that think this is all a political maneuver, uh, those that are in opposing parties to President López Obrador's party. And there are many of us who feel that this is just justice. I mean, and it's about time that a lot of high-ranking politicians in Mexico go under scrutiny so that things are fair for everybody and corruption can continue to decrease. So for all the faults that some people claim our president has, he is certainly stirring up the pot quite a lot more than former president. So we will have to see how this unfolds in the weeks to come. We were very fortunate with Genevieve. Hurricane Genevieve did not uh, cause any fatalities in the state of Jalisco. Unfortunately, that was not the case elsewhere in the country. South of us in the state of Oaxaca, four people died due to the strong, uh, the, the powerful rains. And in Los Cabos, in Baja California Sur, uh, two people died, a tourist and a lifeguard uh, lost their lives when they were uh, pulled by a wave. This is very unfortunate for them. Again, the state of Jalisco, Puerto Vallarta, we got lucky this time, and I hope that as we move forward through the hurricane season, we will continue to, to be fortunate in that regard. In local news, it is good to see that um, our mayor, Mayor Davalos, is continuing to develop projects that involve creating more bicycle paths through the city. This would be a completely new experience for us, but um, uh, Puerto Vallarta is yet another city that is uh, betting on alternative forms of mobility in this time when we worry so much about COVID-19 and also when we worry about the environment. Nothing specific is mentioned at this point beyond the fact that proposals are going to be continued to be, uh, are going to continue to be submitted for the local government to consider in the future. Um, then we also find out, this is called trickled news. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. Let me finish. Let me push my, where is my mute button here? Hold on. Bless me. That was a silent sneeze. Um, anyhow, Claudia Scheinbaum, who is the mayor of Mexico City, joined all the governors of Mexico in the Conago meeting in San Luis Potosí yesterday. What is that? Well, Conago is the national um 
group of governors, National Commission of Governors, and they all met with President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, including Claudia Scheinbaum, the mayor of Mexico City. Um, and uh, this is good news because um, she qualified the meeting as historic. Why was it historic? Well, we don't know because that's the, uh, that's the whole news item. So all she said is that it was historic. And hopefully in the days to come, we'll get to find out why the meeting was historic. Hopefully good and important arrangements and, and associations were made between our president and the different governors. Let me take a quick look at your comments to make sure that there are no important questions that are in the comments list. Um, I hope that the volume is better. I don't know why my buttons seem to have a life of their own and they they lower themselves. Or maybe Luna has been tinkering with a mixer. Not sure. Uh, -um -pum 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 -pum. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How is everybody? Uh, Kathleen thinks it's called. I, yes, it is Gaviotas. Thank you very much. Yes, it is the Gaviotas neighborhood. Um, was I able to check the new ramp yesterday? Yes, I was. I made a video yesterday. I had a chance to go and make a lovely video of the entirety of Isla Rio Cuale. I am going to be editing that today and tomorrow. And this will be part of some of the content that will make available for you in pre-recorded fashion on Tuesday and Wednesday as I give myself a little bit of a break and go to San Sebastián del Oeste for a couple of nights. It was great to walk the ramp, and I took some footage of it, and I took some footage of the isla, the part that um, is being constructed right now. And my friend Christy asked me to take a look at the new distillery that Oscar's Restaurant has built, and we did that. So I will be putting this together for you guys and, uh, and make it available in the next few days. And yes, it is Siam number two. That's what he said he called it. Um, let's see. Uh, hold on just a second. Bless me. Sorry about that. Uh, -bum -bum -bum. Lots of great comments for Siam. Uh, uh, you keep getting, you keep telling me that the volume is slow. I have upgraded the volume, hopefully. It is better now. Uh, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Let's see, let's see, let's see. No questions, just a lot of comments, which is wonderful. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to... Oh, Paul Smirks. Uh, how do they plan to enforce? Well, that is a really good question, but I would imagine that Airbnb will have some kind of, of, of button you can, push on, you can push on the website so that you can submit a complaint. We'll have to see how that plays out. Um, there's a comment here um, regarding the political system in Mexico. And yes, things are being a lot more transparent than they used to be. Um, question, we arrived back in PV on Monday and observed many downtown with no masks. I thought it was supposed to be mandatory. Is that true? Um, that is not true. The state of Jalisco has recommended the use of face masks. However, it has never been an enforced recommendation. Um, if you see a lot of people without uh, face masks, it's unfortunate. And that's just because there are some people that don't don't get it and that is just unfortunate what i do is i avoid people like that when i'm walking out and about and i suggest you try that technique um thank you for the feedback on the volume let me move on to our weather forecast and we look at the weather forecast now it's 27 degrees celsius 31 uh, feels like 31 degrees. It's 81 Fahrenheit. There is 85% humidity, and we have a 3% chance of rain today. Um, the weather forecast tells us that there's going to be possibly light rain in the evening <clears throat> tonight. Humid and mostly cloudy throughout the day tomorrow. 
And Saturday, there will be rain in the evening and overnight, which is good. We love our rain, that's for sure. Um, in lighter news, as I mentioned earlier today, um, meet the new Lord, Lord Borracho. And if you don't know what the word Borracho means, you haven't experienced Mexico. Lord Borracho or Lord Drunk is a delegate for Mexico's foreign affairs secretary who was caught drunk um, out, in, out and about. And when policemen showed up and tried to persuade him to go inside, he got angry and he started um, <clears throat> getting violent against the police. And of course, in Mexican tradition, it is captured on video. So if you want to see the embarrassment of Benjamin Hurtado Aguirre, who works for the Foreign Affairs Secretary in the state of Sonora, you will have the link to enjoy this. And um, that's the way it goes. Now, we've talked about, um, we've talked about these drunk, uh, not drunken, these, these bears that seem to show up in, in Mexico, in Monterrey, in Monterrey. And now a bear that stepped into an office was caught on video. <clears throat> Here's a small cub who somehow managed to pull a door open in an office and is standing on his hind legs and he is just chilling and, and totally, you know, friendly and was curious. And the people in the office kept saying, don't move, don't move. And then the, the bear found a way to open the door back and just left. And it is all captured on tape. What is it about Monterrey and all these bears that keep appearing out of nowhere? I have no idea. But um, in other bear related news in Monterrey, uh, there have been more complaints against the, the official who uh, decided to castrate the friendly bear, the bear number one that we talked about. And uh, <clears throat> and we have yet to find out whether uh, some um, uh, legal action will be, um, will, will ensue against this particular uh, official who determined that the bear that was returned to, um, uh, to a forest was castrated before he was set free. So we'll have to look into all these bears that are appearing in different offices. Thank God we don't have bears here, but we have jaguars. Heaven forbid a jaguar would enter a shop in town. Um, good news for those of us who have admired the career of uh, um, director uh, Del Toro, Mexican director Guillermo Del Toro, who has announced the cast for his upcoming film Pinocchio, we know Guillermo del Toro for his very monstrous view of uh, <clears throat> life and the monstrous creatures that he features in his films. And the cast is going to include um, uh, Gregory Mann, who will give um, voice to the main character. Ewan McGregor will be uh, the cricket. Uh, David Bradley will be Geppetto. And uh, Tilda Swinton, Christopher Waltz, Kate Blanchett and John Torturo and Ron Perlman, among others, will also be part of this spectacular new production, which I believe is going to be available on Netflix. And um, last but not least, I have the first trailer for The Crown season four, which hits Netflix on November 15. Can you guys imagine Gillian Anderson, as in X-Files Gillian Anderson as Margaret Thatcher? I mean, that's going to be absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't watched this series, it is absolutely fascinating to see <clears throat> the lives of the British crown from when Queen Elizabeth was just a teenager up to this date. So this will be season four. We know that there's two more seasons to come. So this is great binging television for anybody that is interested in this. Let me take a quick look at your comments to see what is going on. Uh, bim bim bam bam. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, question Paco, am I getting excited for my upcoming adventure? Yes, yes, I am getting excited for my upcoming adventures, and that's a plural because Saturday I'm going to have a surprise adventure that I haven't talked about just yet. And yes, Monday I'm going to head over with my friends to San Sebastián del Oeste 
needless to say, I'm going to be doing a lot of video walkarounds in San Sebastián. For those of, of you who are not familiar with this amazing little wonderful town, ghost town, a uh, peaceful relaxation town up in the mountains, only one hour and 15 minutes away from Puerto Vallarta. If you, we were talking about the other days, uh, the other day about you're not a, an English speaking local until you have, and we were filling in the blanks. Well, let me add to that list. You are not an English speaking local until you've given yourself the opportunity to visit places like Mascota, Talpa, San Sebastián del Oeste, El Tuito, Sayulita, San Pancho. I mean, these are the primary six great towns that are near Puerto Vallarta that are worth exploring. Um, let me cough again. Oh, that felt good. Um, anyhow, yes, I am very much looking forward to that. And we're making plans on who's going to bring coffee and who's going to bring wine and where are we going to have dinner and who's open on Monday. And the great news is that my favorite restaurant in San Sebastián del Oeste, which is Montebello, Coco and Walter are opening on Monday night. So Monday night we will have dinner at this surprisingly extraordinary Italian restaurant up in the mountains. And then... Um, we're also there's a local well i don't want to spill the, the stuff but I, I it's going to be a lot of fun i'm very much excited uh for that paul makes me laugh because everybody's looking for a job these days even the bears and definitely don't poke the bear i have poked bears in my lifetime renee and sometimes the result can be absolutely soothing i won't get into details because this is a family oriented program um despite my occasional cursing. Um, question, in Ontario, Canada, the bears hibernate. Do they hear as well? Yes, they do, but they must not be hibernating this time of years. Uh, and yes, those are the bears that I was referring to, Rip, uh, but we won't go there today. We won't go there today. Um, yes, beef dip brings a lot of bears and they don't hibernate here. They just party. Um, there are people that are probably wondering you know, what's going to happen with beef dip. Beef dip is the big gay bear get together here in Puerto Vallarta. It happens either in January or February. Uh, I've seen questions up in the social media outlets as to whether it's the get together is going to happen and how it's going to happen. I don't think there are specific news about this just yet. Um, Paul likes the cuddly ones. I'm sure he is referring to kitty cats like my Luna, right, baby? Um, <clears throat> I keep getting this question and I'm happy to answer it as many times as you want me to. How am I getting to San, Seba to San Miguel? Um, I'm not going to San Miguel. I'm going to San Sebastián. Did I say San Miguel by mistake? And I didn't mean to say that. I'm going to San Sebastián. Uh, however, if I was going to San Miguel de Allende, it would really depend on how long my trip was. Because from Puerto Vallarta to San Miguel, you can fly to Querétaro. I mean, you can fly to León, Guanajuato, and then take private transportation from León to San Miguel, which is a little pricey, but not so bad. Or you can take an overnight bus to León, and in León transfer to another bus that goes from León, Guanajuato to San Miguel de Allende. If you have quite a few days to spare, uh, that would be the easiest way to do it. However, for example, when I brought back... Um, my kitty cat, Luna, from Leon Guanajuato, I took the, I took the plane. Uh, nowadays, if you have the intention of going to San Miguel de Allende, it pays to take a look or keep an eye on the local airlines because oftentimes, if you book ahead of time, you can get a flight that is as inexpensive or less expensive than a bus ride. Uh, -um -pum 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 -pum. Let's see, let's see, lots of comments. Um, I see comments about speeches, and I wonder if you have, if this has anything to do with the Democratic Convention. All I can say about the Democratic Convention, and, and I often talk about television here, is that in another life, I would have loved to have been a screenplay writer or a political speech writer because there are some extraordinary examples of great 
writing going on in television and some of these speeches. I really, really, uh, really love that stuff. And, and, and I listen to the speeches, not so much for the political message. I mean, of course, the political messages are interesting, but for the choice of words and the choice of tying ideas together, it is such a learning school for anybody that is interested in writing or in appreciating good reading or appreciating good vocabulary. Um, Barbara Howe asks, is there a tour that connects all these destinations? The distance is too great, Barbara. That's, um, that's the reality of it. But uh, again, these, are, these towns that I've mentioned are all fantastic day trips. Some of them are fantastic overnight trips, depending on what you want to do. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Somebody, sometimes I don't trust myself tomorrow. I've been, um, I smoked too many cigarettes in my youth. That's what it is. Uh, question, have I been to Jardín Nebulosa in San Sebastián? Yes, I have. Jardín Nebulosa is a wonderful new restaurant that is owned by someone who is involved in landscaping in Vidanta. I don't know exactly what his charge is. But he opened this fantastic, high-end, beautiful um, restaurant in San Sebastián del Oeste, and they craft their own beer. And I had a beer tasting there some time ago, and it was absolutely out of this world. I am very much looking forward to having at least a dinner or a lunch there in this upcoming trip. And needless to say, I will shoot, I'll be, I'll be doing video as we do that. Uh, let's see. Christine tells us that she's flying from Querétaro to PVR, and it's only 100 US. This is great. This is a really affordable flight because getting from uh, San Miguel de Allende to Querétaro takes less than an hour. <clears throat> and I think I have reached the end of your comments, which uh, brings me to the end of today's broadcast. Again, today was just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, nothing particularly good or particularly bad. Um, there's another great trip recommendation, Platanitos, north of um, north of San Francisco, San Pancho, and uh, it is a, definitely a beautiful uh, experience. That beach is, is, is truly something. <clears throat> Again, this is what we have uh, prepared for today. I hope you had a good time. As always, I enjoy connecting with friends new and uh, the not so new, and I enjoy uh, addressing your comments or suggestions. Uh, some comments came in through the inbox uh, for Coffee and Headlines here, the Facebook page. I didn't get a chance to address them today, but I promise I will address them tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll look into autos chocolate or the so-called chocolate cars. What is a chocolate car and do you want to have a chocolate car or not? Uh, let me answer this very good one because it is important uh or at least yeah it is important mary bishop says recommendation for place to stay hotel slash airbnb for san sebastian absolutely i would not stay at an airbnb in san sebastian if i can help it because part of the experience in san sebastian is staying at the quaint little hotels and whereas I could choose to stay at a fancy, relaxing, more hotel-ish property, whenever I go to San Sebastian, I choose to stay in the simplest possible hotels. Why? Because that gets me closer to an authentic experience. And number two, it allows me to nurture the local economy. San Sebastian del Oeste is a magical town. It's a small place. <clears throat> and it's not like people are thriving with options. That said, there are some cute properties to be had either through private owners or through Airbnb, but I would always recommend uh, staying at one of the local hotels. I have two favorite hotels, uh, Posada El Oeste, which is where we're going to stay, and Hotel del Puente. And I have uh, visited them both, and I will be doing, again, video walkarounds for these properties. Everybody should go to San Sebastián del Oeste at some point. So. Anyhow, <clears throat> this is it for today. We survived another broadcast. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday, and we will be back here tomorrow between now and then. Please remember to stay safe, stay friendly, stay kind, and stay in touch. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.